So today we'll see how to develop uh, backend Go. So once you have this uh, remote uh, development uh, plugin installed, the extension, then you can click here on this green icon. It, then VS Code will say reopen the container, reopen in a container. So you have to just say yes. Then it will open the code in the container like this. Uh, and then, so this is in the container now. You're not in your Windows machine if you're using Windows. And in the container, we'll load the source code in this uh, location. So, yeah, give that a try. You should see the code once you open the code in the container. And then, okay. Right now? Later, for, yeah, for now we'll just record. Then you can, when you have time, you can. Uh, yeah. So that way the recording will be shorter. So the task is, see, for example, uh, for in the bonds.go, handler, we have this get, right? You have to reuse the mm -hmm. same code and write it for RSS feed. So just copy this by, um, just copy. Then uh, put that in the RSS, uh, rss.co. Okay. So in rss.co and uh, so right now we, it doesn't take any, initially in the, in the UI, if you see it will have, uh, before the RSS feeds, you had the from and to date. I removed that from now onwards, we'll just display whatever is in the database and the database will have around one week's worth of news. So there's between, between dates um, uh, method already in the rss.co. Just use that. It won't take any parameters. So just comment out the parameters. It won't take any. And then take the time and um, so this is signed URL we talked about. The code, uh, just try to fix the imports from the other, uh, from bonds.co, see what imports they are. I think it will auto add, it will add the imports. Uh, yeah, if you're in the container, it will add the import automatically. If you see the terminal, it should do the output. It should do the continuous uh, linting. So if there are any, um, syntactical errors, it will display them here. So I just saved it. So it started linting it. Finished running tool. So it's strange, it didn't find any errors, but usually it will display the errors here. So that's it. So you get the assigned URL for a S3 bucket and a key. For this one, the key would be uh, I think it's called, let me check. Whatever collection name we have in MongoDB, we just use that one. RSS underscore feeds. Yeah, it would be RSS feeds. And it won't take any parameters. So it's just remove this uh, extra uh, percentage S from there get signed URL and then we take the, we don't use the code anymore, right? I removed the code, so just remove the code. Yeah, in your case, you can just delete the code. Yeah, update uh, fundamentals S3 URL become uh, RSS S3 URL. 
just write some log there's no code so remove code so i'm showing this complete example in this video but you know you can refer this video and implement the correct uh, code in your uh, in your site <clears throat> so now the output will read the data from the database not from a specific url so you just copy what we have here we already read from the database right so parse any so remove these parameters um, so in the database uh, just uh, can you use this logic here to read the database and uh, hard code from and to dates to one week from uh from day to t or is this hard code from day to t uh at one week uh, from now from now so it will be like it's uh, it's like 10:30 for you right so yeah. it will be like seven days back uh, 10:30 and uh, two date would be now i think it takes date uh, not time stamp i don't recall that uh, i think it takes uh, time stamp yeah i'll give you, i'll let you know what format it has to be i think it is a time stamp from date parse any yeah from and to date okay it's a it's in date format so i think you can give from date as today's date in uh, that format uh, i think it's uh, today's date would be 2021 oh 8 31 in that format i'll give you this format in uh, in um, this one in the chat from date would be Minus seven days, and uh, two date is equal to two day. So yeah, just to from day to date, and then I uh, use this logic to get the data. You got the results here, right? So once you get those results, instead of doing this call. body fundamental etc um sign you are fundamentals fundamentals would be yeah you can just get rid of this whole we not reading from the um, that play location right so why are we using mm -hmm. that config don't remember okay api key just for the api key um okay seven days from now leave seven days from now because we need to set the expiry so this whole thing you can get rid of here you have to provide data right so this data would be i think you have result in the top so get the result this way results
just get the results like this from the top. Now results is from the database, right? So let me check, uh, so there's an error. So just uh, if there's an error not equal to, let's see what we have here, if the error not equal to nil. Yeah, just pass this nil error. Error like that. And then the result, let me think, in bonds, how we are doing. Um, somewhere we are, as it types, as it go. Yeah, S3 UR. Oh, you can just pass whatever you got from the database directly to this call, this function call. It will internally take care of uh, converting that to JSON and pushing to S3. So you can just put results here. That's it. You got rid of parents, right? These are all hard coded values. From date to date is hard coded. And then bucket and key are specified here. Bucket is this one. So you can just reference that one. How did we do it in bonds? Bucket is nothing but this thing. Oh yeah, bucket is here and key is here. So it should use those, yeah, key and bucket are there. This one you're going to create, right, from timestamp. So those will be defined. That's it, sending up certain sign your, yeah, the rest of the logic will remain like this. So once you have that, um, just call this um, between dates, uh, get S3 URL. get S3 URL. So that way you'll have the angular logic. Then in the routes, just uh, there is an RSS feeds between dates here. Just add a route like this, RSS feeds. Remove between dates and uh, S3 URL, I think I call it. S3. S3 you are, yeah. And then here you call the feeds, that new function we call, we wrote just now. Get S3 you are. So that's it. That's how you have to write it. Once you have it running, uh, let me know. So, Today I showed you how to write that one task. Next time onwards, you can just come up on your own. Do you have any questions? If, if I get stuck, then I'll just Sure, that sounds good. So for this one to run, you need a key. So let me stop the screen share. I mean, let, I'm stopping the recording. Okay. So what I'll do is uh, I'll uh, check in this uh, code to a new branch. So rss.go file has some errors, right? You just fix those. Once you fix them, then try to, yeah, I have to also show you how to debug this. So the way I debug is we have a launch.config in there uh, and we are, So we have launch.config. So there we will uh, have uh, the values. Let me pause recording.
Right. So since your route is set to this one, um, where is it? Yeah, your route is set to this one. When you hit your local host HTTP uh, 8083, this one, you should be able to get the output. So my terminal is here. It won't run now because uh, we have that compiler, right? 8083. You should get output and you should get a S3 URL. So yeah, do, do you have any other questions? So do the same. Yeah. So once I give you the content of these two files, right? AWS config and credentials, just do cat greater than this one. And whatever I give you for config, just paste it there and say control D, D as in Daniel. It will create that file. Similarly, cat this one, control D with whatever I give you. So once those two files are created, you'll have those two files mounted in your Docker container. So then in backend go, you should see those files in your Docker container. <laughs> 